What's up you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I'm going to teach you how to solve radical equations and check for extraneous solutions, All right? So here we have uh, x plus 1 is equal to the square root of 7x plus 15. Okay, so the first thing we can do is get rid of this radical, get rid of the square root sign. So how do you do that? Well, all you have to do is, since we have a square root, we just have to square it, okay? If we had a cube root, we would cube this. If it was a fourth root, we would raise it to the fourth power, okay? That's how you get rid of these radicals. And again, whatever we do to one side of an equation, we have to do to the other, right? So we'll raise this whole side to the second power also. All right, so then on this side, the square root and the squared exponent cancel out. So then we're just left with what's inside of the radical. So we're left with 7x plus 15, and that's equal to this side over here, which is uh, x plus 1 squared, right? Now, x plus 1 squared, we can, those are just two binomials. We can multiply them together, right? So I can write it out as x plus 1 times x plus 1, okay? Now, in order to multiply these two guys together, we can just FOIL, right? So we're going to have, let's see, x squared plus oh, 1x plus 1x plus 1. And that's going to be equal to this side over here, right? 7x plus 15. Now, let's simplify over here really quick. We can combine like terms, right? 1x plus 1x is just 2x. So here we have x squared plus 2x plus 1 is equal to 7x plus 15, okay? Now, we're trying to solve for x, right? That's the whole goal of this. So we want to get them all together on one side of the equal sign. So here, uh, let's move everything to the left side. So this 7x, I'm going to subtract 7x from this side and subtract 7x from this side. And I'm going to do the same thing with the 15. Let's move it over to the left side. So I'm going to subtract 15 from this side and subtract 15 from this side, right? So then those just cancel out. And then over here, uh, we're left with x squared minus 5x minus 14 is equal to 0. Okay, now to solve for x, now we can just factor this, right? Uh, so let's factor this guy. It's going to be equal to 0. So x squared, we'll break down into x times x. Uh, we need two numbers that add up to negative 5, but they multiply together to negative 14. So in this case, it would be a negative 7 and a positive 2, all right? So then here are our two factors, x minus 7 and x plus 2. So to solve for x, just set each one equal to 0. So in this set of parentheses, we would get that x is equal to positive 7. And on this one, we would get that x is equal to negative 2. Okay, cool. So as you can see, we got two solutions, right? Now we just need to plug these back into the very original equation and make sure that they both work. Okay, so let's start with x is equal to 7. So x is equal to 7. So let's plug in a 7 into this equation right here. So we're going to have, let's say, 7 plus 1 is equal to the square root of 7 times x, which is 7, plus 15. All right, so then here we get that 8 is equal to the square root of 49 plus 15. Uh, 49 plus 15 is equal to 64, right? So then here we get that 8 is equal to the square root of 64, all right? This is obviously a true statement, right? So that means this solution, x is equal to 7, is a solution to this equation, okay? Now we need to check uh, x is equal to negative 2, all right? So let's check x is equal to negative 2. Uh, so again, we're going to plug it in for x. So we're going to get that negative 2 plus 1 is equal to the square root of 7 times negative 2 plus 15. So then here we get that negative 1 is equal to the square root of negative 14 plus 15, which is equal to positive 1, right? So then we get negative 1 is equal to the square root of positive 1. Now here, this is obviously not a true statement, right? Uh, the square root of 1 is equal to positive 1, not negative 1. So then here, x is equal to negative 2, we would call an extraneous solution. And it's extraneous because it was one of our solutions over here, but when we plugged it in back into our equation to test it, it didn't actually work, right? So that's why we call this an extraneous solution. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below.